Hello, you're listening to Hugo Talks. So I've got this clip of Leo Varadka in Ireland from yesterday. Leo Varadka, he used to be a Taoiseach and now he's second in command or whatever. And he literally says that even if everyone got the jab, that there was a mass vaccination of 70 to 80 percent by September. Still, he implies, hypothetically, no international travel at Christmas. He says families won't be able to come home for Christmas from overseas. So effectively saying no Christmas next year for many people in Ireland. And we are only in January. And I can assume if that's the case with international travel restrictions, then there could also be a possibility that some form of lockdown will also exist. And this is for Christmas, 12 months away. And even hypothetically, after 80% of the population get the jab. Now bear in mind that when I play this, there are numerous countries all around the world all following these rules. So just because this is in Ireland, it means very probably you're going to hear the same crap wherever you are. Yeah, I, I, uh, just in relation to mandatory hotel quarantine for all arrivals, I, I didn't say it wasn't an option. I said I wasn't ruling it out. So that's qu- quite a different thing. Um, but I did point out some of the realities of it uh, in an Irish context. You know, one that it wouldn't be fully effective because of the the border, um, and uh, we can't uh, impose 14-day mandatory hotel quarantine on a land border. Um, uh, and also, I said we have to be realistic with people um, that if we were to go down that route, uh, it would be most likely for a year or more. Uh, and New Zealand only announced in the last few hours that they intended to keep their borders closed for 2021, so they aren't going to reopen uh, to uh, foreign travel. Um, in any meaningful way uh, until sometime in 2022. Now, they're well behind us on the vaccine, but it does kind of speak to what I said yesterday, that if we were to go down that route, um, you wouldn't really be able to safely uh, say that you're going to reopen your your country until even beyond everyone's vaccinated, because we'd have to know that the vaccinations confer herd immunity, and we'd have to probably get through another, uh, another winter, another Christmas. And bear in mind, this is for a jab that doesn't stop you getting it, it doesn't stop you transmitting it, and we still don't know or have a definite answer on how effective it is at lowering symptoms. Um, Maybe it'll come to that anyway. Maybe it will be the case uh, that um, international travel is not possible this summer uh, and not possible um, um, uh, this Christmas. Um, But I don't think, uh, I, I certainly don't want to close off that possibility today, but maybe we'll have to. If you're serious about elimination and you're serious about COVID being zero, surely it would go on for a couple of years Um, or maybe indefinitely. There you go, indefinitely, which means what, forever? Is that the idea? We are now talking about years and years. We've gone from a few weeks to flatten the curve to years and years to try and achieve zero infections for something that for 80% of the population, it will be asymptomatic or just mild symptoms, so says the data, not to mention that the economy is going to be crashed, thousands of people getting ill and dying from delayed hospital appointments, or not going to their doctors or hospitals through fear of catching it, people losing their jobs, kids out of school, and mental health issues being exacerbated from lockdowns. Surely it would go on for a couple of years, um, or maybe indefinitely, because... COVID is now all around the world. It's always going to be active in some part of the world. So whenever you, whenever you reopen your country, um, you then don't have zero COVID anymore. Uh, it then re-enters. So uh, that is one of the problems uh, with a zero COVID strategy or an elimination strategy is you have to, if, if it's possible, it's not possible for us, but if you can seal your country off entirely, um, when do you ever uh, unseal? Because then inevitably, uh, you let the virus um, back in again and you expose the, uh, you expose a naive population to the virus at that point. Yeah, Leo, it's a bit of a problem, mate, having a strategy that cannot be achieved, although an un- unachievable strategy is handy if you want to keep people in permanent state of lockdown. So you heard it. He says he has a strategy and then he admits it's an unachievable one. Uh, and that's why in New Zealand uh, they've said that they don't even intend to consider um, reopening uh, to foreign travel. Uh, until they vaccinated uh, their population. They haven't even started vaccinating their population yet. So uh, one thing that you know, does concern me about this debate sometimes is people... I'll tell you one thing that concerns me about this is that these clowns keep yapping about the jab and how it is the answer while simultaneously telling us that they don't know how effective it is and that it doesn't stop you getting it or transmitting it. People always want you know, the one thing we could do that would solve it in a few months. 
and I think that's part of um, what uh, I, I know um, both Neffet and government find a little bit frustrating about the zero COVID promise. If only you did this one thing in three months. We'll a lot of hypotheticals here. You know, the first hypothetical is that you have vaccinated 70-80% um, of your population then. That 70-80% is enough to confer herd immunity in this virus that we've never yet seen herd immunity for before. Would, um, would you then take the risk around Christmas of, of allowing at that point um, huge numbers of people? I, I think you probably wouldn't. I think, it's, let's say we did get to mass vaccination. Just, yeah, but you can't assume because everyone's vaccinated that that necessarily would confer, confer herd immunity. We don't, yeah, don't know that yet. That's the point and, uh, so what you would do is, is I think you would let very small amounts of international travel in. I don't think you would say everyone come home for Christmas now. You I really don't. You so you heard it. Oh no, can't do a travel at Christmas. Even after a mass vaccination, couldn't risk it. Ooh, it's too risky. And that's pretty much a year on from now. That's the attitude. I'm getting the feeling that they don't want to give you your freedoms back. What do you reckon? Is I think you would let very small amounts of international travel in. I don't think you would say, everyone come home for Christmas now. You gotta, I really don't. You've you got to keep in mind as well the, the, the new complexity, which is variants. So the UK variant, we, we now are confident that the... And then we have the health minister going on about the variant. Blame it on the variant. So there you go. This is, what, this is what you're dealing with. And I have to say, I am somewhat sick of looking and talking about these people. I, I'm really getting sick of it now. Anyhow, listen, leave a comment. Are you from Ireland? What do you think of this? And also remember, I don't think it really matters where you're from, as the same thing is happening pretty much everywhere. And we are literally all in this together. As always, thanks for listening. Come and subscribe to HugoTalks.com so I can keep in contact with you if YouTube pulled a plug on this channel. And come onto my Telegram channel where you will find a chat room where you can talk to like-minded people. See you later.